What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the long dark winter mute uh, welcome to my metaphor just standing here in darkness Apparently that's what we're doing today. We're just dwelling in darkness I need some kind of light source otherwise we ain't gonna make it through here all I got is ten matches though That's a little bit rough, and I don't know how I feel about that but we got to pull something together here. Ah, there's a torch on the ground, so there it is. I will take this torch, and then we will search this body real fast. Ah, more matches and some fleece mitts. Okay, I can live with that. That's the kind of stuff that I get excited about. Let me see if maybe I can get this torch lit up, because that's going to be the next part. God, I love that lighting animation right there. You see when he threw the match? That was just perfect, dude. They've done such a great job with this game, and like the lighting effects that go into the whole thing. Like, some games are too bright, some games are too dark, and it's clear that the developers aren't super sure how to get that under control, but in the case of the long dark dude, the lighting effects have always been one of my favorite things about it. The way there's like soft hues on top of like strong kind of contoured colors and things like that. It just looks really good and it's pretty to look at, but welcome back to the storyline mode. On the previous episode we had found out that we had a wife and that we had crash landed here in like a plane accident thing and she was saying she was trying to deliver medicine up to something like Great Bear or something like that. I don't know if that's a real place. Canadians, you're going to have to let me know. Item found lost in the storm. What is lost in the storm? Is that like under my key items or something? What is that? Or does it go in the journal? Ah, there it is. A letter found on a discarded backpack. Because we're on limited light right now, I'm not going to play around with that. What I'll do is I'll use that. Ooh, they changed the graphics for the sewing kits too. That looks pretty. It's always so much fun to come back to a game that you put so much time into and so much love into and so much effort into playing and like promoting here on the channel. Like seriously, this is one of the greatest indie games ever made. Period. Like hands down. It stands on its own two legs with games like Binding of Isaac and whatnot as the absolute paragons of kind of the industry and like what people should be shooting for when they make a title. Uh, with low funding and kind of a smaller studio and honestly it's always so cool after putting so much time into this stuff to still see them add things into the game that are just small changes like making things prettier making things nicer making things better to look at instead of you know like the sewing kit before god I think the sewing kit before just looked like a uh, it was just like a little box with like a needle and thread on the front of it with the picture whereas that right there actually looks like something you would get from Michaels or like Walgreens or any of those places when you go through uh, we've apparently exited the cave now we are going to struggle a little bit, having jumped on out of here. Uh, the oh, there's a wolf over there. That's not good. I don't know if I feel like dealing with a wolf right now. That might be a fairly major issue for us. Uh, yeah, they're pretty dangerous. In general, there are ways to get around a wolf, like throwing your torch. You can also brandish it, as I recall. Uh, no, not extinguish. I forget exactly how to brandish the torch. So instead, what I'm going to suggest, since I can't actually seem to find the keybind, is I'm going to go back, and I think I saw some rocks over here, and I think rocks are going to be a good way to deal with this wolf. Uh, there's a new mechanic in the game that was added in when you went into the Pathfinder, or like the Cartographer update. Uh, the Cartographer update was going to allow you to throw stones at wolves if you wanted to get them out of the way. Um, it's semi-tempting to throw a torch at one of these dudes, but I'm actually going to get a rock out here. And if this dude decides that he wants to throw down and get super ham up in here, I'll show him that we got a hawk for him. We got a hawk for this dude. Uh, I'm gonna... Maybe he's not an active wolf. I just beamed him with a rock. And so I don't know if that was actually effective. Either way, let's stay the way... I'm gonna stay away from him. He's fed. He looks fairly happy to me. As long as he don't follow me, I don't care. I'm not. I'm just trying not to get bit today. Trying not to get bit. If you've ever been bit by a dog, it is not a pleasant experience. Dog bites hurt, man. Especially if you got like one of them grip breeds. Like for example, I've got an old English bulldog, which is essentially. It's a dog that they used to use. There used to be a sport called bull baiting back in the day where you put a bull in the ring and you would have a team of dogs. This is definitely not one of those uh, PETA approved sports. But anyways, it used to be a sport back in like the 1800s before it was outlawed. And this is how the bulldog came to be, is that the bulldog is a fighting breed, essentially. You take a bull, you put it in the middle of the ring, and the dog's job is to bring the bull down and drag it to the ground, essentially. And you would have teams of dogs that would fight with this bull. Well, they're a grip dog. A grip dog means that, uh, ooh, good, we're not that far out here, we found a road. A grip dog essentially means that they were trained to grab onto something and hold on. So they tend to have low centers of gravity, they tend to weigh around 100 pounds, but they tend to be very low to the ground, and their jaws tend to just, like, not release. It's kind of like that old wives' tale you hear about pit bulls where they have, like, a, yeah, we need to sit next to a fire. Let me set up a little campfire over here and we'll continue our talk, but it's kind of like, um, light sources, no. Let's go ahead and we'll make a little fire over here. 
Fire! Oh yeah, I've got a cattail head. I'll use that then. That's something that's easily renewable and we can get that from anywhere. Oh, what we'll do is we'll pass time right here. We'll start a fire up for about two hours uh, worth of fire and then we'll just kind of sit on top of it. But yeah, bull baiting was a sport back then and my dog is a grip dog. He's bit me once or twice while we were playing like... Uh, well, we are playing real rough. I play rough with my dog, and he likes to play tug-of-war. That's how you can tell. Grip dogs tend to really, really, really like tug-of-war. They'll play tug-of-war by themselves if they can't find anybody to play tuggy with them. And so anyways, you get bit by a grip dog. It's no good. They got them big-ass jaws that make up like a huge amount of their muscle mass, and it is a mess if you get nipped by one of them. I'm going to throw the reclaimed wood in here. That'll give me a little bit of time to play around with. We will also use this time to cook up some food so that at the bare minimum we can fill our gullet if we need to. Get ourselves nice and strong off the calories of the land. Uh, hopefully we don't end up with nighttime. We need to find shelter. If we don't end up finding shelter, I'll fall back to the cave and I'll just... Actually, we can't sleep. I don't have a bedroll. We're waiting on blackouts right now, unfortunately. Uh, while we chill next to the fire, I am also going to get in here. And we... We're going to track down for ourselves some food sources. Uh, the inventory has changed around slightly, but mostly everything's just gotten prettier, in all honesty. Everything just looks better now. It looks like they've redone and sharpened and added contrast to a lot of the stuff that existed inside the game uh, that did not exist before. Like, even stuff like the old meat graphics look really good. I like it. They did a great job with it. Hopefully we can lock in on some new storyline elements as we play, too. I think that'll be a blast. So there it is. I've got my temperature up a little bit. Instead, I'm going to pass an hour. There we go. So that's what I was looking for. But we are running out of daylight, which is going to be our downside. So in a rare break in tradition, I'm going to sprint. Uh, normally, I would never recommend this inside the confines of the game if you're playing survival mode right now. If you are sprinting, that means that something has gone sincerely and horribly wrong. However... How many hours of daylight do I have left? Probably about two to three. It used to tell you exactly how many hours you had left. Now you just kind of got to eyeball it from the thing that they give you. This looks like a dead end to me, and there was a car over there. It's entirely possible to warm up inside of a car if you need to, although I wouldn't recommend it. It looks like there's something dead over here. We got some crows flying around, some kind of like visual indicator. This stuff is a happening. You want stuff to happen? I want stuff to happen in this playthrough. Even if we die, at least that's something happening. You know what I mean? Something cracking. Something popping, something going. I'm okay with all of it, and that's exactly what I'm looking for here today. Uh, we still got enough stuff left to help us out. Oh, there's another wolf over here. Is this the way that I came from? Oh, shit on me. That's the way that I came from. Let's go ahead and stay out of trouble, then. I'm going to sprint on back. Be careful about sprinting. It eats up your food meter really rapidly, and it adds to your tiredness, uh, which can be viewed by the little eyeball at the bottom of the screen right now, which is accessed by holding down the tab key. I'm um, explaining this stuff. I know a lot of you on my channel are like veterans to this game. You've played it a lot. You enjoy this game. You like it. But I'm sure there's going to be some new people coming in to check out the series as time goes along because I know that I'm one of the main channels that covers this game. There's a number of channels that cover it, and I think I'm on that list. So anyways, if new people decide to come in from Search or wherever else, just trying to make sure they've got like a fundamental grasp of the way that the game plays out. Uh, vehicle, let me enter you. I'm going to enter this vehicle very rapidly. We're going to check the glove box. Uh, other places, ooh, there's a soda in the glove box. I wouldn't put a soda in my glove box, but that's because where I live, it gets up to like 120 degrees, and that sucker's going to explode in there every single time. Don't leave sodas in your vehicle where I live. It's a bad plan. It's not going to work out for you. It will lead to a detailing bill. Uh, nothing inside the trunk, but it was unlocked, which is a plus. We've got a wolf over there on the bridge. My wolf eyes see him. That's not good because that blocks us from a fundamental way that we might be able to go across here more rapidly. Hmm. Don't know how I want to play this one. We do have cars that we have access to. It does look like there's a low road that'll go that way, but I'm going to stick to the bridge for right now because we are low on time and also low on options. Hit that glove box very rapidly. Nothing inside of there. Uh, check these visors. These used to flip down instantly. Now they've actually got like a little timer on them. I'm going to use this opportunity to throw on my gloves because I know you guys are just like, why aren't you putting on your wool socks? Why aren't you putting on your wool gloves? I know. I'm a bad survivor right now. And I've got a busted knee, so, you know, take mercy on me. We've also got a fleece vest right there. A lot of the stuff we're wearing is wet and or frozen, though, which in survival terms is really bad. Like crazy bad like you really don't want your clothing to be wet if you're in a survival situation I don't see anything in there and you know I'll be honest with you do they add anything to the hoods 
They didn't add anything to the hood. I was about to be like, where the hood, where the hood, where the hood at? Got some firewood in the back of the truck inside this truck right here. This little flatbed, we've got nothing. Not a zilch, but some cloth on the floor. Apparently an aspiring tailor. Oh, 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 oh. Trying to make his way through there. I'll stop throwing rocks, fool. We need that ammo for later. I'm trying to open up the hood right now. Some decent leather shoes. Probably not what I would recommend for survival. A cotton toque is inside of there. Supposedly, somebody told me there was a reference in one of the old versions to my videos in the description of, like, the toque or something like that. I don't know. Maybe they were just being funny. I'm not sure. I said toque wrong for, like, an entire playthrough. And so I've never known if, like, what I... I don't want to be arrogant. That's the thing, is it's easy to be arrogant in life. And I don't want to, like, attribute something that happened to myself. Let's have a look here, because I heard, let's see, the toque you were wearing when you crashed on the plane. Simple knitted cap, not as warm as wool, but better than nothing. But we could put on two of them, that's the thing. So we can strap on two of these bad boys. So there it is. Who said there's no room for strap-ons in the middle of an adventure? We've got room for it. I'll always make room for that kind of shenanigans. Let's get inside here. We will search around. Not a zilch, nothing. Anything on the floorboards? No! Let's keep riding. You can tell I'm excited right now. I'm also running on 100% caffeine at the moment. I, uh... I slept about two hours last night. I was so excited about this. It was like Christmas for me. I was very, very ex But how cool is that, though? Like, if I was a developer, if somebody told me they stayed up all night waiting for my game because they were so excited about it, like, I don't That would probably put me in tears. Like, I wouldn't even know how to respond to that. Though, like, a thing I had created had elicited that response out of somebody. But I will say, get the hell out of here. You better bounce, Wolfie. Chuck a rock at him. Let's get a gap in between us and him. I don't think we want to be careful running down these hills though because sometimes you'll get a sprained ankle We need to find civilization like right this second civilization I'll chuck a rock Ah oh, shit There we go get him with the puncture weapon fight back get him. Yup. I don't think we have a good weapon for this though We are getting our ass kicked right now. Ah Jesus Okay, so not good. Uh, I kind of feel like that guy was immune to rocks I don't know. I'm going to get inside one of these cars over here. We managed to stab him with a hook of metal real fast, which I don't know if that would get a dog to let go of you. From what I've heard, you're supposed to punch him in the nose as hard as you can. Do him like a shark if a dog latches onto you. Or punch him in the throat is the other part that I've heard. Is you're supposed to punch him as hard as you can, like right in the larynx. Uh, instead of, like, a lot of people panic and go to the ground or whatever. That's the last thing you want. You don't want a dog to tackle you and take you down to the ground. Uh, let's throw some antiseptic on the wolf bite. I think that's going to help out. We've got a little bit of a toxic oh, risk on. right there. Uh, as far as that goes, gotta got a wolf bite this. over there. Get that. Come on. Why didn't that work? The treatment didn't do anything? Okay, well then band-aid it. Do your thing, man. I thought I'd, they've changed the way the, the wound system work now with this update as well. And so it used to be like, oh, you've actually got to select the one. Okay. So the way it used to work is there used to be no icon. Uh, what you would do is you would just... Am I still bleeding right now? Do I still have any medical issues? I would assume so. I've got a sprained wrist and a sprained ankle. That means I can't run, and that means I'm going to have trouble. Yeah, I can't hold weapons. So we've got problems right now. Some fairly serious problems, in fact. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll throw this out right here. I'm going to do my best not to head back into harm's way, but we got gnawed on nice and early. And that was something that I was hoping I could avoid. We've got some raishi mushrooms over here. Uh, those are going to be great for making raishi tea. Or raiki tea or whatever. Either way, we can make food out of this. And I want them. Uh, you can harvest all of these off of the tree. In general, I would recommend against eating mushrooms off of a tree. Unless you're like a botanist and you really know what you're doing. Don't do it. Don't risk it. There are a lot of mushrooms out there that will kill you faster than a rattler bite. There's a lot of mushrooms out there that are crazy toxic to human beings. Like, wildly toxic. I always tell that story, but people die where I live because we had like a, for, during the 80s and the 90s, we had a big immigrant population from Eastern, from the Eastern Bloc after the wall went down where I live. And apparently the mushrooms here look just like the mushrooms from where they live. However, the mushrooms where they live are edible and the mushrooms here are so poisonous they'll kill you in like a matter of hours. Like you will die really fast. Like you need to go to the hospital and get your stomach pumped and they need to do all kinds of crazy surgical shit to save you if you eat a mushroom here. Like, don't do it. They get big, too, so I can understand. Like, we get some mushrooms here that are probably about the size of a Frisbee. Some big old mushrooms. Oh, dude, we got another wolf over there. And I am in no shape to outrun this little bastard. I don't even know what I'm looking for right now. If I should just play this normally, like, survival mode? Or... Yeah, I know it, buddy. You and me both. 
I don't know if you got any further bleeding, but uh, I can jump in here and we can make a bandage. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, it's not too ridiculously cold right now. It's not going to help out with your status at all, but it might do something. I mean, so I've got a bandage and we can throw that on a foot or we can throw that on a hand, but that's a sprain. I don't think a bandage is going to help out with that. As far as that goes, you just got to stay off of it with a sprain. Even a splint or whatnot won't help. You just kind of don't use that as much. Don't put weight on it. Have we got any caves or anything around here that I can knuckle up inside of? Poof. The other problem is I don't know what zone I'm in right now. I thought that I started out in Timberwolf Mountain, but I'm beginning to think that that is not the case. Uh, things are looking mighty unfamiliar right now. There's a few too many cars on the road and a few too many things going on. We've managed to come up over the bluff. And my concern now is that I haven't moved far enough to get away from the wolf. I don't know where he's at right now, but I am more than willing to allow him to own the road. Like, he can have it. No biggie to me. Ooh, is that a... Ooh, I think that's a portable over there. I think we may have an opportunity to lay low for a bit and wait for these sprains to go away. Although, if I recall correctly, it takes upwards of like two days for a sprain to go away. And we don't have a density of food supplies right now that's going to allow us to fatten ourselves up and just sit inside. In addition, there is also the issue of cabin fever. Uh, cabin fever is one of those things you got to watch out for in this game, which they added a couple updates ago. Where if you're just sitting inside the house doing nothing all day, every day, you can get yourself into trouble. Start going a little bit stir crazy, you know what I mean? Uh, we got outhouses over here. I'm going to check these for tools. Sometimes people lay their tools down before they go into the bathroom in this game. And so occasionally, you can find something useful just sort of laying around a bathroom, like a crowbar, uh, an axe, anything of that kind. I doubt that they'd give it to us this early, but it's a gamble that I'm willing to play around with. I mean, we've got nothing better to do but wait for our sprains to go away, our feet. booze to heal on up. Uh... Got some barrels over here we could tear up if we wanted to. Nothing around the back, though. Wheelbarrow might be marginally useful if you're moving firewood or something around. But other than that, everything looks pretty devastated and messed up. Let's get down in here. we got to take some time off and just run this thing out. So inside of here, we got newsprint. We've got a metal shelf right there that I don't think is going to be incredibly helpful. we got cloth right there. Yeah, I know, buddy. you got problems. Problems, oh, so many problems. All right, so it might be worth it to light a match in here. Kind of see what's around. Oh, we got a bottle of water over there. I don't think I've got a lot of... Don't have a lot of supplies right now, though. I got matches. Let's light them up to make sure we're not leaving anything in the... Ah, cargo pants right there. Coat, just in case you want to carry stuff and also look stylish. Cargo pants. Uh, we got aqua purification tablets right there to keep us on the move. Sounds good. We've also got some socks laying over here, some cloth laying over there. Definitely things I personally would have missed uh, had I not gone through. Now, what we can do is I should be able to repair some of my gear here. Uh, we're in a little bit of a shape at the moment, but what you can do is you can check the status of a lot of this stuff. And so, for example, on that toque, we could repair that a little bit. Our jacket's looking okay. Pantalones are looking a little bit rough. We can throw those on, and we can double them up, though, which will actually insulate us and add up a little bit. I'm going to say to repair these with some cloth, 25 minutes. Yeah, do your thing, man. See if we can get uh, some of these things taken care of so we don't need to be out in the wild for so long. We're waiting for nightfall to get here anyways, and so nightfall. Quietly crept in while I sewed pants. All right, so we've got that covered. Uh, that's in rough shape right there, too. I'm going to suggest we repair that, and then I'm going to check my cloth supplies right after that's done. So we've repaired a couple of our pieces of equipment. Luckily, he's pretty good at repairing things and sewing. So it looks like our character has a modicum of skill when it comes to this kind of stuff. I'm going to drink the sodas because those are going to hit two points. They're going to refill both our thirst meter and our hunger meter. they got a couple of calories in there. That will help out a little bit. We can also eat cattail stalks, which we picked up over by a previous lake. It's only like 150 calories, but it's 150 calories more than we had previously. Which in a situation like this is exactly what you were going for. I don't want to light a match, so I'm just going to try and find a bed over here. We're not that tired. I doubt we'll make it through the night. We'll try though. 
Uh, let's go for seven hours of sleep right now. That'll get some of our status back. Hopefully it'll take some effort off of that. Oh, good. We sprained, We got rid of both of our sprains. Fantastic. Those strained little body parts that we're dealing with. Uh, resting heals you and saves that. Okay, good. That's going to save our game for us. And in the meantime, what are our meters looking like? Our health is back up. That's something I'm incredibly thankful for. Our meters are looking okay. We've still got some nighttime left, but we're not that tired. So instead of indulging in further sleep, I'm going to fill up my meters. There it is. So meters are looking good. 880 calories inside that steak right there. It's been cooked, so we don't have to worry about food poisoning or worms or anything like that. Sleep for a couple more hours. One thing you want to be aware of is the early morning in this game, even though it's light outside, it's still going to be cold. Uh, so keep that in mind. You probably don't want to venture outside till about 11, 12 o'clock most days, unless you've got really good gear. If you've got good gear, you're probably solid, but uh, aside from that... You may want to keep that on the D-low for a little bit and just not risk it. Eat some beef jerky, keep ourselves all nice and taken care of. Uh, with cloth, what do we have going on here? So we got two band-aids, we've got raishi mushrooms that we can prepare. I think I will more than likely do that because we have nothing better to do anyways while we wait for the sun to come up and the moon to go down. Goodbye, moon. Hello, sun. Uh, we can do prepared rose hips. I'm going to continue with the raishi mushrooms and get this all chopped up. And there's kind of a fun factoid. You have to prepare your old man's beard dressing now, too. Interesting. I was unaware that that mechanic had changed around. You used to be able to just use it like it wasn't even, like, a thing. Uh, it looks like we don't have the recipe, so we have six cloth. I can get away with repairing some stuff, then, if the sun will come up and I can get a little bit of light. Three bandages sounds about right to me. Is that how many I have right now? Let me take a look at my medical menu. So we've got four bandages. That should be more than enough. If I'm using more than four bandages, that means that I'm really messing up at my job. Let's go ahead and we'll repair our pants to get that up and wait for the sun to come up. Perfecto. That'll do it. Uh, the vest, shirt, will sweater needs a little bit of work, so we'll go ahead and throw down on that. Uh, don't neglect your equipment in this game. Make sure that you keep it repaired. Make sure you keep it all nice and taken care of. If you don't, you're losing out on a fairly major... I mean, we could be talking full degrees of insulation that are not available to you if you aren't repairing your gear. So if you've got anything that's in the yellow and anything that's not looking good, you should definitely break out the sewing kit and see if you can get that stuff all back up to spec. Make sure that the drill sergeant comes by, you'd be looking good. Uh, we're looking solid now. We can walk away from this one with our head held high. We survived a pesky situation, but... You know, that's the way it goes. Back outside right now, it does look like we have some temperature issues that all need to be dealt with. Uh, taking a look, yeah, it's actually real cold outside right now. We've got a three arrow down on our temperature meter. Uh, normally this would be the kind of situation where I wait it out inside, but I'm trying to keep it interesting and do some fun stuff in this series. So we're going to be playing a little bit balls to the wall. I'm going to be playing a little bit more aggressively than I normally would. I'm going to take out my rocks, too, just to make sure I got some. It didn't work on the last wolf, but maybe that was a wolf of high quality. Maybe that was a wolf that somebody's taken some time, spent some pay-to-win money to upgrade. I don't know. We'll have to figure that out later. And then a pretty good plan for right now is to follow a paved road. Now, as a general rule for survival, it's not like you don't want to 100% follow a road, because there's a lot of roads in this world that run through the middle of nowhere forever and more or less lead nowhere. They were roads that were useful at one point to someone and then were no longer useful and then were abandoned. Uh, it's the same thing with following railroad tracks and it's the same thing with following power lines. It should only really be done as a last ditch desperation act if you're trying to survive. Ideally what you would want to do is if you would want to kind of make some kind of map for yourself and use the power lines as a navigational source, get to a high place and see if you can follow the power lines to a likely location where there might be some sort of settlement. Uh, that's the way that I would play it anyways. Instead of following the power lines, I would use them as a reference point to get to high ground and follow them as far as the eye can see, assuming you're not in too ridiculously, I guess, oh, I don't know. I don't even know what the word is that I would call it. Um, Church looks like it could be a good shelter. Well, as long as you're not at like a topographic advantage, I guess is the way that I would put it. Um, there's a church? All right, let's go in. A little bit of sanctuary! Sanctuary! Uh, inside of here... At least it's warm, man. At least it's warm. You take what you can get in this situation. Some fleecy mittens over there. Very nice. Uh, we've got a cotton toque on that side. If nothing else, we can break that down. Uh, we got a cardboard box that we can scrap up for some tinder. Doesn't look like there's anything underneath it. In general, I'm kind of superstitious, so unless I really needed to survive, I probably wouldn't bust up any pews or anything. But that's just because I'm superstitious. I'm not saying anything bad's going to happen when you do it. I'm just a superstitious ass, and so I probably wouldn't. 
Uh, let's see here. We've got cloth right there. We've got a book. Eventually a source of knowledge. For now, something to burn when you're freezing. Damn, we're up in here burning the Bible. You gotta take what help you can get in this situation. I don't know, man. I ain't a particularly religious man. But you find yourself in a shit situation. You know, you got nothing but a shit sandwich to eat. Hell, you take a bite and you do it strategically. Doesn't look like anybody's been here for a while. This place is a little roughed up. Is that a wall safe? Or is it like a secret spot? I need a hatchet to break down a plank. Okay, understandable. Well, as far as our options go, if nothing else, this is a shelter. And so I'm going to use this opportunity to tear down anything that I'm not wearing actively. Uh, so what we'll want to do right now is we'll go into our menu and we'll swap out hats. So there we go. Uh, doesn't look like we have... Fleecy mittens are looking good. Okay, doesn't look like we have a whole lot of other options to swap to. As far as shoes go, if we put on decent leather shoes, they actually have better resistance than what we have going on, although they're less resistant to wind. They're more resistant to just, like, dead temperature. But, uh... I don't know what I want to do with those. Instead, what I would suggest is that you scavenge any gear that you're not actively using. Uh, just make use of time. That's a big part of survivalism, is just learning to make use of time. Because everything is measured by the amount of days worth of calories you have left. And so, use the time the best you can. I'm going to tear this stuff up. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here for the next episode of the Long Dark Story Mode. Uh, not a lot of exposition in this episode, but we're going to see if we can get it in the next one. I'm sure we're working towards some kind of objective right now. At the moment, just trying to get my warmth up. Trying to make sure that I've got the things that I need. We will resume our sojourns in the next episode. Thanks for stopping in, and hi do, everybody.